We will now consider the 10-minute rule motion on leasehold reform. Mr Justin Matters. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to make provision about the regulation of the purchase of freehold by leaseholders to introduce a system for establishing the maximum charge for such freehold to make provision about the award of legal costs in leasehold property tribunal cases to establish a compensation scheme for cases where misleading particulars have led to certain leasehold agreements and for connected purposes. The working title of this bill is the Leasehold Reform Bill, but it has been suggested to me that a better title might be the Leasehold Emancipation Bill, yeah. because yeah. while I welcome the Government's recent consultation on ending unfair leasehold practices, and I would urge Ministers to hold their nerve in ending this outrageous practice, sadly there is little to suggest it will address the ongoing situation of existing leaseholders, many of whom frankly feel trapped in their homes. There is genuine cross-party support for this bill, which I hope will encourage the Government to facilitate this bill's passage through Parliament, or at least come up with a bill of their own dealing with these specific proposals. And on the issue of cross-party support, I would just like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the honourable members for West, Worthing West and Popper and Limehouse, who have been true champions of the leasehold community. So, the principal aim of this bill is to deliver a fair and simple mechanism to help tens of thousands of our constituents to escape from their current leasehold agreements. But before I come to set out how that will work in practice, I will briefly explain the background. Many of my constituents and many constituents of other honourable members have spoken about how they thought that they were buying their dream homes on new housing developments built by household names more often than not in the last decade or so. Many, but not all of them, knew that the property was being sold to them on a leasehold basis, although between the salespeople and solicitors recommended to them by the developer, very few were fully aware of the finer detail of what they were signing up to. Almost all were left with the impression that it would have to, they would have first refusal on the freehold of the property and it could be purchased for a reasonable price. Figures quoted for the purchase of the freehold by the salespeople working for the developers bear little relation to the costs people are quoted later on. This is because shortly after they had moved in, the freehold in their property had been sold without their lodge or consent to a third party that they had never heard of. In many cases, the freehold to their house has been moved offshore so that what they thought was their home had in fact become the property of a shady and secretive yeah. string of companies yeah. operating from a tax haven. Often it is impossible to say who the ultimate beneficiary is. Under the terms of the lease, and in order to continue to live in their own home, they are charged an annual ground rent, which in some cases will double every 10 years, taking an initially modest sum of a few hundred pounds to an exorbitant annual fee of thousands of pounds within their lifetime. In some cases, this renders the property unsellable. This ground rent, it should be pointed out, is separate and in addition to a service or maintenance charge. Whilst those charges pay for something that can be clearly defined, I have never been given a satisfactory answer by developers as to exactly what their ground rent pays for, yeah. other than to provide an additional cash cow for the builder and a revenue stream for the freeholder. The person living in the house gets absolutely nothing in return for their annual payments. When those living in their leasehold home inquire about whether the new freehold owner is willing to sell them the freehold to their home, they are often told no, if they receive a response at all. I've had to threaten freeholders with them being named on the floor of the house just to elicit a response. Nor is the response consistent. Neighbours in almost identical houses in my constituency have been quoted wildly different prices to purchase their freeholds. My honourable friend, the member for Hall Western Hassel, has brought to my attention a situation in her constituency where the company Keep Mode have asked many residents to pay huge additional sums to avoid their freeholds being sold to a private company. But at the same time, others were told the freehold was unavailable. And yet, a lucky few were actually given theirs for three. Such an inconsistent and unfair approach would no longer be possible under this bill. When the leaseholder eventually received the quote for purchasing the freehold, they are often quoted an astronomical sum and are told that it is non-negotiable. These quotes are always many times higher than any figure the developer's sales staff would have told them. The same situation has been true when residents of a block of flats have collectively sought to purchase their freehold and take responsibility for the shared areas themselves. So instead of the simple purchase of the freehold for a set price that the developer led them to expect that they could take advantage of, instead they enter into the convoluted and expensive process called enfranchisement. 
This is a process of incessant horse trading which exists at present to establish correct valuations and provides a lucrative market for surveyors and lawyers. It is often the case that the provisions of the lease also require the person wishing to buy the freehold to pay the freeholder's costs in dealing with the application. So we have the indefensible situation where people are footing the bill for the cost of professionals whose job it is to, is to actually maximise the amount of money that they will take off you. So the first aim of the bill is to introduce a simple and fair scheme with a clear and pr transparent statutory pricing model which will be capped at no more than 10 times the annual ground rent for a leaseholder to purchase their freehold. At the moment, leaseholders are often quoted costs of over 100 times the ground rent to purchase the freehold. We can change this. Such a system already exists in many other countries, including Scotland and Northern Ireland. I believe it is time that people in England and Wales had the same rights. Yeah, yeah. Such a system would involve a simple formula for calculating the value of the freehold based on the level of ground rent and the number of years left on the lease, with a cap on the maximum payable. This would be set out in statute so everybody knows at the outset what they are dealing with. While this would come as a very bad news for lawyers and surveyors in this field, it would provide a mechanism to enable our constituents to finally own their own homes in a straightforward way and to provide security for their futures. Currently, too many leaseholders are prevented from exercising their rights because they cannot afford to do so. One recent example was of a retired couple paying £38,000 to buy their freehold. They are being ripped off when they first buy the house and then they are ripped off again when they try and buy the freehold. The second provision of the bill seeks to rebalance the awarding of costs at leasehold property tribunals. The system as it stands reinforces the balance of in imbalance of power existing between the leaseholder and freeholder and ensures that a leaseholder won't have to pay a freeholder's costs just to enforce their own rights under the lease. Finally, I have deep concerns about both the information provided to purchasers by developers and also the advice given by solicitors who are often recommended by the developer, which is why I'm calling for a statutory compensation scheme. I labelled this scandal the PPI of the house burning industry, yeah, yes. and that phrase has caught on precisely because yes. of those similarities. We need a similar process to compensate those who have fallen victim to this scam. In some cases, I have evidence that developers insisted that purchasers use solicitors nominated by them if the sale was to go ahead or were offered large incentives, including paying the legal fees for the leaseholder. And in many other cases, buyers were put under pressure to use a recommended solicitor because they were told there was a short window of time available to complete the purchase and that only a solicitor from their panel will be able to complete the relevant searches within this time frame. What this meant is that many of my constituents ended up using firms whose advice on these leases was that they were standard documents. That might have been standard for that particular development, but it doesn't make it fair or reasonable. The third element of my bill therefore seeks to establish in law a system of compensation where misleading particulars have led to certain leasehold agreements. Alongside this, I would expect a full independent inquiry to take place to look into relationships between developers, freeholders, finance companies and conveyances in order to establish how a system that was allowed to develop that has left so many innocent people feeling ripped off. It is time we held to account the guilty men and women who must have known that this scam would ultimately be at the cost of their customers. The leasehold scandal is one that nobody emerges from with credit. Government, lenders, freeholders and lawyers have all played a role, but I, I must reserve the lion's share of obloquy for those developers who have deliberately and systematically created a set of toxic assets with those left in the lurch finding the biggest purchase of their life is a pup. When people bought their houses, they thought they were just doing that, buying their home. What they never contemplated for a moment was that actually the true owner of their home would be someone they may not know the identity of, <coughs> can then sell on their interest in the property to somebody else without their knowledge or consent. We need to give people the chance to fairly escape that trap. Madam Deputy Speaker, it will take years before the stench of ignominy that envelops those guilty yes. developers wears off. But this bill may help in that process because until we come up with an effective way to release people from the shackles of leasehold, the authors of this injustice will never be forgiven. I commend this motion to the House. Yeah. The question is that the Honourable Member have leave to bring in the bill. As many as that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? Jim Fitzpatrick, Sir Peter Bottomley, David Hanson, Ian Austin, Mary Glyndon, Justin Tomlinson, Ruth George, Antoinette Sambach, Bill Esterson, Gareth Thomas, Derek Twigg and myself. Yeah. Justin Maddis. Well 
Ja. Lease hold reform bill. Second reading what day? Friday the 2nd of February 2018. Friday the 2nd of February 2018.